Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and it's time to do another garden tour. Brought to you by my sponsor, Vessie Seeds. Almost all the seeds in my garden were provided by Vessie Seeds. And uh, if you want to support the, uh, the podcast and the uh, YouTube channel and you need something that they sell, buy from them. You can see the description box for details uh, on the coupon code that you can use to buy stuff through uh, Bessie Seeds. So uh, with no further ado, it's uh, first week, uh, end of the first week of July. We're finally getting some heat here. We had a little bit of a heat wave over the course of the uh, last uh, four days. It was up to 30, which is unseasonable for here. But uh, as of today, it's gotten a bit more normal. Uh, around 24, 26, something like that today, and it's going to be basically mid 20s all week and uh, mid teens in, in the evenings. So uh, let's uh, have a look around and let me show you what's going on in the garden. Okay. So here we are at the entrance of the garden in my uh, hugo culture beds outside the garden enclosure, and we've got some potatoes here doing well, about 14 inches high. More potatoes here. I got some squash in the back here which I'll train up the hill. There's too many planted here. I need to thin these out. I plant a lot of seeds and some of them get taken out by slugs and the ones that remain are the ones that get to to live and the smallest of them get weeded out and the biggest one gets to live. Same situation here although these ones are a lot bigger. I can't really remember what varieties I planted here. They may all be the same. They may be different varieties. I have no clue. I'll know when they start producing the squash. <laughs> Here we are in the garden, and uh, let's start on the right-hand side. I've got uh, some, these are parsnips that were direct seeded last uh, November, and they're, well, maybe six inches high, and they still still need to thin them out a little bit more and maybe add some mulch, but they're doing okay. I've got some other parsnips that were under a plastic dome uh, for uh, right up into the end of May that are a lot bigger. I'll show you those in a minute. Uh, i got some kale here that was sown last fall. You're wondering if you can sow kale in the fall? Yes, you can. Of course, it won't start growing until uh, you know the following spring, but it's just one more thing you can get done. This is just my own save seeds. It's kind of a, I guess, a red Russian kale. Um, and uh, yeah, they're maybe the tallest of them are about a foot high. Um, and I haven't done anything in this garden. <laughs> Literally have done nothing since I sowed the seeds. Uh, there needs to be a little bit of weeding and a little bit of uh, mulching, um, and I'll get around to that at some point, but uh, Anyway, I've done nothing, and I've got kale, so that's good. Uh, I got, you know, of course, more impressive-looking kale elsewhere in the garden. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, what else we got here? Here's my uh, Swiss chard. This garden uh, was uh, Swiss chard and lettuce. This lettuce has all been eaten. I'm down to the Swiss chard, and Swiss chard looks really good. And uh, using uh, the cut and come again method, I can basically harvest this. Uh, Swiss chard right up until November. Whenever I want Swiss chard, I've got it. So uh, I'm happy with that. I think this is a giant Ford hook, if I recall. Uh, and it just seems to be getting bit bigger and bigger. I do need to thin it out a little bit. They're planted, some of them are planted a bit too close. I like, I like them planted about a hand span apart, like this row in front of you here. So some of these other rows do need to be thinned out. Uh, over here I got some uh, zucchini. I've taken the dome off for good. These zucchini, I think I've got two different varieties here. One variety that produces massive zucchini really early, and another variety but that's a bit more normal. So I don't know what this one was. I don't know which one I planted here. But I'll know when it produces the zucchini, and I'll make note of it. If, assuming it tastes good, I'm going to stick with this one, <laughs> because uh, <laughs> it's pretty impressive. Maybe uh, two and a half feet, almost three feet in diameter, the spread. Uh, looking good. And th these were under domes till the end of May, basically. Over here, I got a lettuce garden. I've completely neglected this, um, but basically, uh, I've got lettuce. Although it's all going to bolt soon, so I'm going to start eating lettuce like crazy. Uh, a little more lettuce over there. This is my onion garden. I've really neglected this unbelievably. I'm not starting off this uh, garden tour with a real bang here. Trust me, it gets better as we go along. Uh, half the onions didn't germinate. There's two different varieties. One variety on this end, and another variety on this end. The ones on that end did germinate, and they're looking okay, but I do have to do a little bit of weeding and, and work over there. Just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, a little bit of lettuce at the end little box there. That was all moved from elsewhere. Uh, these uh, beets are doing really good. These were under a dome till some point in May. And uh, actually, this little heat wave we've had recently, I actually got a beet bolting here. I've never seen that before, but 
I don't think in the, the entire time I've lived here, we've had like three or four days of 30 degree temperature in, in, in June. That's extremely rare for here. So that may be the cause. And I expect, I can tell like looking at my lettuce here, it's, it's gonna bolt really soon. It's gonna be used up, I guess. Maybe have to start hitting up the neighbors and trying to give away some lettuce. Uh, over here, we've got my uh, pickling cukes, pickling cucumbers, and uh, they're doing really good. You're wondering what the boughs are doing. I got a couple spots where they didn't come in and they were taken out. So I moved some last night and then I uh, forgot about that. And I came in here around lunchtime today and they were really suffering. I mean, I moved them and water them, watered them. Uh, and I, I think I took a lot of soil with them when I moved them, but you know, cucumbers hate being moved. <laughs> so uh, anyway, I put these on to protect them from the, uh, the sun and uh, hopefully they'll bounce, bounce back. Uh, maybe I'll do a little follow-up video in a week or so to let you know how that's going. Uh, and as of noon today, they looked uh, like half dead. Didn't look good. Uh, let me show you here. Actually, this one has recovered. This looked a lot worse uh, around lunchtime today. It's recovered somewhat. I'm going to leave this on because I'm going to be uh, at work tomorrow, so I don't want to have to mess around with it. Uh, over here, I've got... Uh, uh, eggplant and this is uh, like a broccolini. I, I sowed the broccolini here in the uh, first week of April under a dome in this part of the garden and then around uh, middle of May or end of May I moved the broccolini over here and I sowed uh, eggplant down either side and summer savory down the middle and the summer, summer savory is coming in well. I've never grown summer savory before so I'm interested to see how it goes and uh, the eggplant have come in well. I'm still, I've got one dome, it's not in the garden right now, but I've, I just moved it out for making this video, but I've got one dome that I haven't put away that I put over these eggplant every night. And I'm going to keep doing that for about a week uh, just to keep it w extra warm in here at night and try to speed things up. But I'm pleased with the results so far. The biggest of these might be six inches high. Um, that's not bad for a direct seeded eggplant in this growing zone. You know, under the conditions I'm growing in where we had the most unbelievably bad spring I've seen in years in terms of just cold and overcast and not a lot of sun and a lot of direct light they don't look like much now but I think they'll uh oh we'll see I'm always I'm, I'm overly optimistic with these things but I think they'll come along fine um here I got some uh uh you know salad cucumbers I think it's called uh oh what's it called now Oh, I can't remember the can't remember the variety now, but uh, the, the name is something like I think Tasty Green. That's it, Tasty Green uh, cucumbers, and uh, they're coming in good. A couple of them got taken out by slugs, and I re reseeded them. So, so these would have been sown about a week ago, so which is quite late, basically sown beginning of uh, July, which is very late for sowing cukes. So we'll see. That's a bit of an experiment. We'll see what these amount to over the course of the growing season. But uh, certainly, uh, these will do well. Uh, of course, these were started all started under a dome, right? Uh, the dome that was on these carrots, I moved over here to get these cucumbers to go. So these carrots, in my bigger, I got two gardens with carrots in them, and these are much bigger than the other ones. The other ones are maybe uh, six inches high, whereas these are over a foot high. And these grew under a dome till um, like the end of May. Um, Here's my uh, parsnips. Everybody knows I love parsnips. And these were under a dome till the end of May. And look at the size of them. They're all they're two feet high. Right? So, uh, and there's two different varieties here. The, from, from sort of the middle over is a hybrid called Albion. And from the middle to this end is my own Save Seed, which I think is Hollow Crown, the Hollow Crown variety. And they're all basically the same size. So we'll see what happens uh, in terms of the actual uh, root part. Uh, here we've got uh, a beet garden with some salsify, which I've never grown before. And uh, this weird little row here is this stuff called perpetual spinach. I bought a pack of this stuff, I don't know, back in like 2006. And it's just been like sitting in with my garden stuff for years. So I just dumped the whole pack <laughs> down this row. Um, and they all, you know, they germinated. Um, now, that being said... I really don't know what perpetual spinach is because this looks exactly like Swiss chard to me and it tastes exactly like Swiss chard. So I think it's just a marketing thing. I don't think they're, people can correct me, but 
in any case this variety and this is not this is not a vessi seed product uh, i can't even remember where i bought these from but uh the idea of a perpetual spinach uh this isn't spinach <laughs> it's swiss chard and it doesn't taste like spinach at all um my uh, beets here not as big as the other ones because they weren't covered for as long they were just covered to basically to get them to germinate and then i took the pop the lid off moved it elsewhere uh i got a lot of i got some weeding to do here even, even though i've got the cardboard thank god i've got that uh, i do have these weird uh i don't know what this what this weed is but i got a lot of it but it won't, it won't take long as you saw in my weeding video with these no-till gardens it doesn't take long to weed something i don't have a lot of weeding to do in my garden it's not like every bed needs to be weeded like this bed isn't weeded at all right this bed will not be weeded um, but some do you know it just really depends on how heavy the mulch is and how good a job you've done in that respect um, this stuff called salsify it looks like it looks like garlic i guess but it's got this long carrot like root uh, apparently it doesn't taste like carrot uh, i have no idea what it tastes like but it's supposed to store well and do well in this climate and it's certainly come in really well so uh yeah, I'm really curious to see what these taste like. Uh, over here, I got the uh, uh, some peas, and the peas are coming in. I've been eating them the last few days. I love uh, fresh Caesar sugar snap peas. Really happy with them. Delicious, and they're about five feet high. And I got the beans at the bottom. And uh, last night, I sowed uh, rattlesnake pole beans along the base. So, you know, the peas will start to give up in about three, three weeks, give or take and uh, the pole beans will climb. Uh, I mean, it's a bit late to be sowing beans, but we'll, we'll see what happens, right? Uh, it's always worth a try. Got nothing, nothing, to, nothing to lose. You know, I'll either have extra beans or not. It doesn't matter, because I got pole beans, rattlesnake pole beans planted elsewhere. Uh, this uh, rhubarb is big and strong and healthy, but it is creating a bit of a problem on the border of this carrot garden, because uh, it's, it's shading it, so I have to remove some of those leaves. Here we are back at the entrance of the garden, and I'm going to do sort of like the middle and left side now. Um, I've got, uh, this is parsnips. This is kind of what they look like when they go to seed, right? Uh, I left some in the ground to save the seeds. These are my own hollow crown variety that I, I keep saving the seeds from every year. Those big ones you just saw. Uh, some of them are from seeds from these plants. Uh, I got uh, winter boar kale going all the way down the edge of this uh, bed. That's at the bottom of this uh, south-facing slope. Uh, I planted some beets behind the kale. Not looking too impressive right now, but you know it's it's early beginnings. Uh, I got uh, some uh, Paris Cos uh, romaine lettuce interplanted with the kale. Uh, when these are removed, that'll make room for the kale because these kale probably get about twice the size at their full maturity. Uh, I got some beans down here. And at the very end, I got uh, uh, corn. Uh, for those of you, people have asked me to do a video on a follow-up on what I think of this sand. Uh, you know, for those that are new, my garden was always wood chips, and now I put sand in between my beds. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about that here, but uh, teaser. <laughs> I'm going to do a video talking about uh, what I think about this sand. Uh, I guess I, I put it down... At some around the middle of May, so it's been what is that a month and a half with sand and, as opposed to wood chips. So I'll give you my full, uh, unabridged opinion on using sand as a mulch between beds and uh, pros, cons, and lessons learned type thing. Uh, this is my tulip garden. Tulips are all done. I moved some uh, um, strawberries into this garden last November and very few of them made it there's, there's a few right there, there's a strawberry right there right so a few of them made it but it was a bit late i think november is just too late for moving um, moving strawberries for sure uh, this bed over here i moved the strawberries in in november and most of them came in so uh, you know they, they were just moved last fall so it's early beginnings I, I, it's very possible i'll get a decent yield out of these this is a variety that gives you a yield in the spring but also a yield in in the fall like in October so I'm expecting uh, better results in October but I do have some strawberries I can see a little bit of red right <laughs> it's a little toad <laughs> um, seems like I've been seeing a lot of snakes and toads in the garden so I think the, the heat one thing about this sand if it's a sunny day when you come on this garden it is hot out here um, anyway here's a 
There's a nice red one, right? So, but anyway, not, not, not even enough to make jam. Kind of depressing, but uh, yeah, it's it's a new garden, so you know next year will be a lot better. I'm, I expect. I got strawberries in a number of locations here, and they've all come in sort of weak this spring, but they've come in. So next year will be better. Uh, here I've got uh, a garden where I got onions in the middle because you can't reach the middle, and kale around the perimeter. Uh, two different varieties of kale. I got my own saved seed here, this red Russian type thing, or Siberian kale. I don't, don't really know what it is. This poor frog. I don't want to step on him. Uh, and then I've got the winter boar kale. Right, all the winter boar kale that I have in my garden was, was started in just one of those cold frames. I've got some here. I got them all the way along the edge there. And over here with my um, garlic, I got some jammed in there. Uh, this garden here is. Uh, Spinach and this spinach is, is bolting. This is the second planting. I had a spinach this year My first planting bolted and these ones are going to bolt because we had a four days of 30 degrees Celsius, so they're they're done But uh, anyway, they're still edible and I'm going to eat them this week uh, I've got uh, kohlrabi here and uh, tree collards there and uh, what I'm going to do if I can get a couple of rainy days is, is reposition all of these plants to fill this whole bed. And I'll probably nestle some of them in with the garlic over there where there's some spaces. And I'll probably nestle some kind of around the, I guess, inner perimeter uh, in amongst uh, these onions as well. And they should all get along fine. Um, this is my garlic garden here. And uh, just cleaned this thing up and weeded it. And look at the kale. Look up. Look how healthy that looks, eh? Growing in with this garlic. Doing great. Um, I have a little bit of boards there because I just, they, you know, if you ever grow boards once in your garden, you'll have boards for the rest of your life. They're really pretty blue flowers. I, I don't really, not really fond of boards as a, as a food plant. People have told me to eat the, uh, eat the flowers. So let's see. Yeah, I guess they're all right. Nothing to write home about, in my opinion. Uh, <laughs> I got some uh, lettuce there. Um, over here I got uh, potatoes. And uh, I got beans down the center. That's what this tr big trellis is for. You can see the beans are, are climbing and working their way up. Right, some of them have found their way in the potatoes, and I have to sort them out before they get too uh, intertwined with the potatoes. I don't want that. So a bit of work to do there, maybe tomorrow morning. i got to get it right on that right away. But uh, they're growing fast. I mean, this this one here was here yesterday morning, and now it's here, right? It's grown like six inches in a day. So, uh, yeah, can't wait to get these uh, pole beans going. Rattlesnake pole beans. Got some garlic down here. This is the, the pea garden right there. And uh, garlic growing behind the peas. Garlic's doing great. Uh, more strawberries here. Again, this garden needs a bit more time to become... Uh, you know, realize its full potential, put it that way. Uh, over here we got, uh, this is my asparagus that I direct seeded last year. This asparagus is in its second year. It was just seeds planted in the ground. Uh, I'm really happy with the results I've gotten with this uh, asparagus. I mean, I'm not, I can't eat it yet, but it just seems so strong and so healthy. And it was like a, a buck 99. I didn't need, I don't even think I used all the seeds, right? So, I mean, if you like asparagus, you know, pick a bed, get some seeds, be patient, and a uh, pretty cheap way to get a perpetual source of food. Another bed of uh, strawberries here. These are ones I moved late in the fall, probably a little bit too late. So, you know, I would say move strawberries in September if you're going to. If you watch any of those videos of me moving the strawberries, I do it exactly the same way. I just do a little bit earlier in the, uh, in the fall. Uh, the blueberries are coming in really good. There's one blueberry bush there, a bunch of blueberry bushes there. I've got strawberries sort of at the base of the blueberries. Um, this space is meant for strawberries, so when I get some decent runners coming off my other strawberries, I'll, I'll populate this area with strawberries. Might jam something in there in the meantime, maybe some kale some, or tree collards or uh, who knows what, something, something, right? Um, more blueberries over here. Um, actually used uh, what they call the layering technique with these so uh, I had the blueberry plant 
and then I had a, a tall long branch coming off of this way. I dug a trench in the ground and stripped the leaves off the branch and laid the branch down in that trench, put the dirt back and put a rock on top to sort of hold the hold it down and let the uh, end of that branch poke out of the ground and that stem will root, right? It'll be supported from this plant while it gets established. I did this last fall, but it'll be supported by this plant as it gets established and eventually it'll be its own plant. So it's a way of taking one plant and making another plant out of it for nothing. And I, I did the same thing here. And you can see it looks healthy, right? And I got a Vietnamese coriander because I just needed to use the space for something. So this is a Vietnamese coriander here. Uh, it's just a kind of, uh, I guess, a, a weed, I suppose, that just happens to taste like cilantro. Um, it's, it's not coriander, it's not cilantro, but it tastes like it, and it's close enough for me. And, uh, it's a, uh, doesn't bolt. It's a, you know, it's a perennial. So it's not perennial for this zone. I think it's a zone 11 perennial, so it certainly will not survive the winter here. I'm sure there's some way to take it inside and deal with it that way. But um, anyway, the good thing about it is that you get a steady supply of uh, cilantro all summer long if you like that flavor in your food. Uh, more garlic over here and I got some uh, carrots. These are carrots that were sown a bit later than the big ones and they weren't under a dome the whole time that's why they're smaller. But as I said the largest of them are maybe six inches high. Cold frames. I got uh, the tomatoes in this one right. The reason these tomatoes are so much bigger so these tomatoes here are over a foot high. And uh, I basically put the seeds in the ground, maybe a quarter inch deep under soil, and I put plastic right on the ground. And that technique is very effective for getting them to germinate. You, you know, you put the seeds in the ground, you water it, you put plastic on the ground, close the cold frame. Right? These are all direct seeded out here. Uh, but as soon as you see the seed begin to emerge, you have to get that plastic off or you'll cook them. So I probably had about eight or nine plants here, and I killed most of them. You can see these ones that are small, it's because I had to reseed back here. There's like this one, this one, and this one are the only ones that survived the, the torching. But if I'd done this properly, all the tomatoes in this garden would look like these babies. Look how thick and strong and healthy they are, right? Look great uh, for di direct seeded with the kind of spring we had. Useless, overcast, cold spring. And I got, you know, I can actually see, uh, yeah, little flowers beginning to form already. Not bad for first week of Ju July. Uh, of course, all the results in the cold frames aren't so amazing. Uh, this uh, this basil's looking good, but I planted a row of, I can't even remember what it was, but a row of something against that piece of wood, and it didn't germinate and didn't become anything. <laughs> so, and not too impressive. Uh, I think I'll probably just move some tomatoes in there. I've got a, another garden I'll show you in a minute with lots of tomatoes that need to be moved, so I'll just probably put tomatoes in here. Uh, this is a garden where I tried direct seeding my uh, peppers. It was kind of a fail, I guess. I only got a couple of them to, to go. Right, so I, this is a pepper. I believe this is a pepper that I direct seeded. And right there, that's another one of them. Uh, as far as I could tell, those are the only two that actually germinated. Uh, the rest of these are transplants, but I, I planted the transplants last uh, last Thursday in the evening. And then the next day, the, the heat wave began, and I forgot to open this lid before I left in the morning. And when I got back later on, they were all like this. So uh, I'll have to hit up a garden center tomorrow and uh, see if there's uh, a couple... I don't know, it's a, not a lot of transplants kicking around to buy this time of year, but anyway, I'll have to try that. But I have a plan for next year. I'm going to direct seed successfully peppers one of these years. I need the right kind of year, and so I need the season to cooperate. And I also need to just be a bit more attentive. I, I really neglected this garden, and, uh, you know, almost every bed in my garden, I basically just put the seeds in the ground and, and leave them, <laughs> which is kind of what I did here. And uh, perhaps the peppers needed a little more uh, tender loving care. Well, we'll see how these ones do. Assuming these, these are in fact peppers, I wouldn't bet my uh, net worth on that. But I think they are. Here we are outside the garden enclosure. And uh, a lot of stuff growing out here. I got uh, these potatoes here and some more potatoes there. 
and uh, I've squashed here. This bed was supposed to be the variety of Georgia candy roaster, but I only had that one and that one survive the slugs. I was not uh, vigilant enough in protecting these plants from slugs, just using a little bit of slug bait. Um, so, uh, yeah, a lot of them got taken out. At least I think it was from slugs. It could have been some animal, who knows, right? There's all kinds of animals out here. Um, I was out here earlier today and there was a half a dozen uh, rough grouse in that brush there. They just all flew away. Um, so anyway, I, I seeded uh, some Blue Hubbard squash. Uh, this whole bed here is Blue Hubbard squash. It's supposed to be a good tasting squash to store well. I've never grown them before. So uh, we'll see how that turns out. I don't know why this one is so much bigger than the rest of them, but uh, that's just what happens sometimes. Uh, we got garlic here. And we got uh, onions here. Uh, over here, I just thought since this was going to be, this area here was going to be weedy anyway. Um, so this area looked just like that grass over there. Okay. So all I did was I took a weed whacker to it, cut it low. I threw a whole bunch of little sort of rubbish, uh, you know, t tiny potatoes that I'd saved from last year that were really too small to peel or eat and they'd, they'd gotten eyes on them. So I just threw potatoes everywhere here and threw a bunch of leaves on top and that's what I've got. So I don't, I don't know what it's going to amount to. Laziest potato garden I ever made in my life. But I thought instead of just having a whole bunch of weeds here, I might as well have some uh, potatoes. <laughs> it's, it's just uh, I prefer potatoes to weeds. <laughs> well, we'll see how that works out. Uh, more potatoes over here, more potatoes over there, more garlic over here. And down here we've got my uh, tomatoes. I had a, a good stretch of this uh, this side, right? Got tomatoes on either side, and then uh, basil and uh, uh, coriander down the middle. Uh, basil looking good, All right? Nice looking basil. Uh, all direct seeded under a dome, right? The dome came off oh about a week ago. It was just getting too hot out here, and uh, I was just I just decided to let the air at it because I lost so many. Uh, tomatoes to uh, root rot because it was I guess it was just too damp in there I wasn't watering it too much but uh, perhaps having the dome I, I really don't know I also had tomatoes growing in here last year last year this was a garlic garden but I jammed tomatoes in here because uh, I needed a place to put them uh, in with the garlic so perhaps it's just not enough uh, you know decent crop rotation here which, you know it's just it's, there's only you know so many things I can grow out here outside the enclosure that are sort of herbivore proof so uh, yeah it's difficult to do an effective crop rotation schedule out here um, anyway there's enough certainly enough tomatoes to to reposition and fill the bed I'm not worried about that at all I mean that's that's the great thing about uh, direct seeding you get a lot you get a lot of options and you got a plan B and a plan C so this whole thing will be full of tomatoes <laughs> as the season progresses I just need a stretch of rainy days to move these it's just too hot to move things right now. And actually this one here uh, is actually a volunteer that I didn't even plant. And it's almost as big as the other ones. Uh, who knows what that's going to become. Probably a cherry tomato. Most volunteers end up being cherry tomatoes. Anyway, that's where we are here at the uh, end of the first week of July. Uh, we're finally getting some heat. Start, finally starting to feel like summer. And the garden's just exploding with growth. And I'm really happy with that. So I uh, hope you got some good ideas and that got your mind working for plans for this year and for next year. If you enjoyed this content, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it, have fun in your garden. <laughs> Thanks for watching.